Hey guys, same shirt, different knife. What are we gonna talk about today? We are gonna talk about a knife that I had never gotten to see before. This is the Civivi Picaro. Um, Civivi is Wii's budget brand, I guess you'd say. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this, guys. If you're wearing uh, headphones, turn down the volume because here comes the music. This is the Civivi Picaro, and this is on loan to me from Neves Knives. This is one of Civivi's, I think it was one of their launch uh, designs when Civivi first started coming out, when they first started coming out with their budget line of knives. This is a really nice knife, but I am going to tell you, it is big. This is a big knife. So we're going to go ahead and take a look. at This is an attractive knife. It has some unique qualities to it. So. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this turned around. We're gonna tip this down. We're gonna take a look at it, uh, do some weight, some specs, and some size comparisons like we always do. So without any further ado, guys, I'll meet you down at the bench. All right, guys, this is the Civivi Picaro and it is a really nice knife. I like a lot of things about it. There's a couple things that we're gonna talk about I'm not a fan of, as you, you can probably already pick it out of the lineup. Um, so this is a thumb stud only opener, or you can flick it. Uh, one of the first things I want to point out is the uniqueness of the location of the thumb stud. The thumb stud just kind of floats in that finger aperture. Now the finger aperture is abundantly large enough for you to flip it. The action on this is really good. But before we get into all of that and get to playing around with it, let's look at some specs and size comparisons. So this is the Picaro. Um, Civivi Picaro. It is done by Wee Knives. Uh, so this is their budget brand. It is a liner lock, steel liners with standoffs, not a full backspacer. There has been a good bit of weight reduction in milling inside the liners. The uh, G10 is really aggressively textured. That's one of the things I'm not such a big fan about. Uh, because it will tear up pockets, but this pocket clip is not so incredibly strong that it does tear up pockets. I've carried this a good bit. Um, so you're looking at, here we go, guys. Like I said, not a small knife. 9.04 inches. So basically, it's a 9-inch knife. That was a .04 comes from the, the uh, conversion from metric to imperial. Your blade length, 3.94 inches. That's a large blade, and it's a hollow ground D2 blade, and they're listing their D2 as about 59 to 61 Rockwell. It has got a black finish on the blade. Closed, this knife is 5.1 inches. Uh, it was actually 5.09 something inches, so I just rounded it up to 5.1. Like I said, hollow ground blade that runs on washers. The action on this is really good. Uh, they say on their site that it is 3.99 ounces. So give me a second. Let me go get the scale. All right, I got the scale here. Let's see. What's it come up? I'm going to say that if I could stop hitting my tripod. Guys, online, this is listed at 3.99 ounces, which I don't know why they do. Just go ahead and say four ounces. But it is 3.99 ounces. Let's see what it says on here. I'm going to imagine that this is going to come out right at four ounces. Let's see. Four ounces dead even. So for those of you that don't use freedom units, in grams, that comes out at 114 grams. Not a real heavy knife for as large it is as it is. Let's get this out of the way. Um, so with that, you get a lot of knife at a really light weight. Uh, the action on it is really smooth. However, as much as I love Wii knives and Civivi knives, you guys know that I don't gloss over things. I had a guy go on and accuse me of getting um, special knives from uh, special knives from uh, CJRB and Artisan that had been handpicked. I don't do that when knives come in. If I find an issue with them, I, I announce it. So one of the issues I have with this, and I, I don't know if it's this, this specific knife or not, there is an issue with the blade play. 
there is a good amount of blade play and I have that pivot as tight as I can get it and not lose any bit of action. If I tighten it down anymore, it becomes impossible to open. It doesn't flip and you can't thumb roll it. It actually just, you, you're fighting with it. As a matter of fact, the action on it's a little bit tighter right now than I would like to see. So yeah, there's kind of an issue with that. Another issue, if you look, I've had this knife apart and put it back together a couple times. There's a couple small gaps in the, the G10 in places where it's just like, I don't know whether maybe it, it, it warped or if the inner liners have shifted or something like that. Um, as far as that, that's the big thing about it. It's the only parts I've seen. And I do not like the pocket clip. I do not like the pocket clip at all. If you see, it is actually set for left-hand carry because in my hand, it's dri it drives me nuts. Uh, I can't, it is a reversible pocket clip, which is a good thing. I just can't get past the way that pocket clip feels in hand. And it goes along the lines of everything I've said about not liking deep carry pocket clips. I don't like them. I don't like when they ramp up to this large loop here. Um, we talked about deeper-ish carry pocket clips that other companies have used. Uh, mostly we'll talk about the one that is on, I, I'm, I'll mention it, it's on the Arian prototype. Uh, nice deepish carry pocket clip. Does not get you much more sticking out than that, but it is done in such a more comfortable fashion. I do not like these that ramp way up to a big loop. They just, they ruin everything about the knife for me. I would not have this pocket clip on my knife. I would, I would figure out, I'd either make one for myself or I would find an aftermarket. But I will say that for a large knife, it carries well. It does carry well. Uh, comfortable. I like the I like the design features here, the cues. It is an attractive knife. And the fact is, it's not that thick a blade stock. And even the fact that this is a fairly narrow blade, they have gotten it fairly thin behind the edge and really slicey because instead of a, a standard fl full flat grind that you see on most of knives, this is done with a hollow. And it's a really well done hollow. I don't know what degree it's at, but it is very well done. So last thing, let's go ahead and get a couple size comparisons. All right, let's get some size comparisons. So the standard is always going to be the Sebenza. Everybody knows what a Sebenza 21 looks like in size ways, uh, size wise. It is definitely larger, a good bit larger than the uh, Sebenza 21. And let's get a comparison here. My Riat Horizon D is a little bit closer in size, I think. It's a rel relatively large knife. I think we're looking at almost, almost the same. I think that the, uh, I think the Picaro is just a slight bit longer uh, when I get them lined up. So if I lay them down like this, the reason I do it in, in hand is because you get some parallax um, at the angle. So it can actually make a knife look, see that whole, see how much smaller that looks now comparatively. So yes, it is a large knife, but it does carry well. And in hand, with the exception of the pocket clip, it's just a bit, it's, it's, just, it's just about right size to make a knife this size fit in hand really well, fit in pocket. And it does carry well. I just, like I said, not a fan at all of the pocket clip. So, but this was, this was a design that was one of the first Civivi models. It was one of their older Civivi models. This was actually designed by Joe, the, 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 basically the guy that runs, uh, We Knife Company there in China. And it, it's a pretty good design. And I, like I said, the aesthetics of it, amazing. I just wish that it had a better pocket clip. Uh, it does have a lanyard hole as well. I forgot to mention that. So guys, man, that edge is good. D2. This is, I forgot to say, like I said, D2, I do believe I said it, uh, I don't remember if I said it, is D2 steel, and they did it between 59 and 61 Rockwell. It cuts really well. Uh, it does, I have used this. This got used a good bit. So putting a coating on D2, really good idea. Uh, I recommend that to everyone that, that wants a D2 knife. I was like, get the coated one. Uh, 3V, 4V, D2. They have a tendency to, to, to oxidize a lot. So, all right guys, let's turn this around and have some final thoughts. Before we get in any further, I need you guys to give me recommendations of some good tripods. This tripod is just trying to fall apart. It, it can't ever keep it square. It doesn't ever want to sit level. It always, I have to fight with it every time. So final thoughts on this. 
this is a really nice knife. Like I said, I, I've got a problem with the action on this. It does run on washers, on phosphor brown washers. So what happens is you get it cranked down too tight and there's a lot more surface area. I'm not as big a fan of washers as a lot of people are. I kind of see them as a step backwards, but I know a lot of people like washers. All in all, really nice knife. I did see I was playing with it and I got the, I got it to where the, you got to try. It's a little bit tighter. I was trying to get rid of the blade play in it. So, I mean, like I said, price on this is where you really, really make out. And like I said, as long as they're not all have the blade play issues I was experiencing. Um, MSRP on this is $67. I look at, I usually look at three places. I usually look at Blade HQ, um, Knife Center, and Amazon to look for prices. And if I can't find anything on Amazon, then I usually, I'll find a third somewhere else. So MSRP on a 67, Blade HQ and Knife Center both have it for $56.95. And the most expensive of the three that I found was Amazon, $57.39. So, uh, you know, you get points, it depends on what vendor you are. I usually give at, at least Blade HQ and Knife Center. I know a lot of people use Knife Center because they have the rewards points and you can get free things that way. So I usually do that. But like I said, all in all, really great knife. I love the aesthetics of it. And the fact is, it's a large knife and it is significantly lighter than you would expect it to be. Uh, with the issues aside, yeah, it's great. It's a great, great little knife. Um, thumb studs are a little sharp, I will say. I didn't say that earlier, but that's just a, that's a minor little inconvenience. So yeah, the CVB Picaro. Uh, it looked like it was in stock at least at Blade HQ. So if you guys are interested in a rather large folding knife that's attractive, there you go. Guys, I love you all. Take it easy. I will see you in the next video. I'm putting stuff in the corners. Um, I think I'm going to put Neves Knives is going to be my recommendation for this video by my link to the channel. If you don't follow Neves, you should. And if you don't follow Lindy Lou over at the Knives Meow, you definitely should. So guys, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. There's an applause button if you really like the videos. And if you really want to support the channel, you can join my membership and get access to free stuff. I love you guys all, and I will see you in the next video.